I think I think that's part of the design now. I guess it makes it more interesting as well. What you're saying up to work each day. Yes. And then obviously <coughs> here you're with a ton of your fans. Have you had many fans that are actual prisoners? We met a, a bunch through the How Women's Prison it? Association. Yeah. Yeah, we work a lot with them. So we did a whole campaign about second chances and it was really impactful. Um, being on this show definitely changed the way I think about women in prison. You know, um, it's people make mistakes and some are lucky, you know, that don't get caught, but some do. And once you're in that system, you're really like stuck. So I've learned so much about it. Yeah, we've learned, I mean, I know that I've been educated about things that I had no idea about by being on this show, so it's been awesome. I mean, there is that educational element, I think, to it, because you talk about all sorts of things, you know, there's the assaults, there's the cultural divide, um, you know, um, giving birth in prison and, and abortion, all sorts of things like that. Do you think that's an important element of the show, or do you think it's all there, really, for pure entertainment? Yeah, I think that's like the main point that Genji Cohan is trying to make is, is staying relevant on you know these topics that you bring up, and therefore we're educated all the time too. Yeah, and bringing awareness to a topic that you know we don't usually see in mainstream media, um, which I, I believe there needs to be more shows like this. And the diversity is phenomenal, and they're all women. Like uh, we have to continue to make shows. I mean, we have to talk about that as well because of the fact that you're all playing many very strong female characters. Um, do you think that part of the success of the show is due to timing? Because it does seem like at the moment, certainly, people are calling out for those strong roles. I mean, it, the timing, I mean, we, we've always been there. We just haven't been represented. So I, I guess it's, it's the right time or whatever, but it's about time. So I'm really excited. Because I expect to Lorraine to come recently who played B in the show. And something that she said, because she's now kicking Aston into the bad land. Um, and she goes, now really she feels spoiled. She doesn't want to do sort of the typical archetypal female roles anymore. She wants to have very strong ones, otherwise she just turns it down. Do you feel the same? Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it's still hard to come by, you know, there's a lot of actors, a lot. You know, it's a big, big pool of competition. So it's hard to come by only strong female leads, you know, they're up against several other actresses, but it's becoming more and more, you know, popular. I think the women are making it, <laughs> making it a, a reality. Yeah, I mean, for me, um, I've only played gangsters, girlfriends, or like <laughs> rape victims, or prisoners, so for me, I don't really have that much opportunity. 3.1 you know, of Hispanics really are have speaking roles in Hollywood. So that's why um, I'm starting, I already started my own production company to, instead of complaining about it, I'm just gonna make my own roles, so. so yeah. And hire people like us, you know, that are under, underrepresented person really, give the jobs to, you know, the writers, the producers, the makeup artists, like, and more, you know, more opportunity for women and powerful women. So my production company is called Unspoken Productions because of all the unspoken stories that we need to tell. Fantastic. Thank you. And I know Scott, because both of you are quite entrepreneurial. You've got a production company and you have your music as well. Um, do you think that any of your music will feature in the show? Because I know that's happened before where movies and things you've been making, they've taken your soundtracks. Yeah, um, probably not. <laughs> um, it turns out that all the all the actors sing on, on this show much better than me. Um, I also have a production company. That's so I can make comedies because I only get to play like serious sort of down and out characters. Except for I think Pennsylvania is kind of funny. Um, so I'm trying to like blaze a trail for for comedy in my directing. And strong women, they're invited, I guess. Yeah. Gotta be strong enough. You have a very <laughs> strongly funny. Yeah. Very funny. And um, one of the other things I love actually, because obviously you guys had to fight as well, so you've got those action scenes. What was it like fighting as an angel? You mean being beat up? 
Wow. Yeah. Um, that was fun. Um, the angel of God. Look at my dress. Yes, that was fun. I got I got beaten up pretty bad. My teeth got really knocked out. Yeah. In the show. In the show. Yeah. <laughs> but then you got to fix them. You must be happy about that. She was very happy. <laughs> and then look, obviously, the fact that you guys are pretty grimy most of the time. Is that uncomfortable? Yeah. I mean. I mean, it's fun to roll out of bed. Yeah. <laughs> For me, I, I like it. <laughs> yeah, no, it's fun. It's fun to be grimy. Yeah. <laughs> and then one of the things, especially the black area, is her looks. It's, it's all about her looks, really. Um, is that kind of a theme that you think will continue? Do you think that? Oh, um, I mean, she's the liner. You know, that's how people recognize, you know, me from the beginning. And she did it backwards, you know. I was like, it's supposed to go here. And then, oh no, black is different. That's her way. I'm like, okay. So I didn't understand my character until like you know, later, see, like four years later. <laughs> but um, yeah, I think that's just her thing. She loves that. You know, she, she tried to create this like mean personality with her makeup, but she's like soft inside. So I don't know. <laughs> So you're basically playing you, in a way. Well, and she's, <laughs> no, she's my alter ego. I definitely yeah. don't say what's on my mind <laughs> when I want to say what's on my mind. But we have a lot in common. Like, she loves music just like me. It's my first love. I gotta, I gotta plug this in. My single came out last night. Laura Loca, please, please look it up. It's my it's like, okay. long dream. I literally quit acting because of the opportunities. And I moved to New York for music. and, and and Black Eye was my first audition in a long time. So I just feel like things are meant to happen and it opened the door for my music now. So Fantastic. Do you want to tell everyone what your single is? Yes, La Hora Loca, The Crazy Hour. In my country, uh, Dominican Republic, um, when you're having a wedding, uh, when everybody's dying down around midnight, this carnival comes out and it's crazy and it's called The Crazy Hour. And it puts everybody back in motion and dancing, merengue, salsa, bachata but that's more of a Latin thing. <laughs> but I wanted to show people where I'm from, and um, so this song is more of a dance song. But it's about a, my ex-boyfriend who didn't want to work. <laughs> so if you want to be with me, you're going to have to work. <laughs> it's pretty much what the song is about. <laughs> and then, obviously, Penn Pataki, I mean, talking about crazy, she certainly starts off, I don't know if she's, do you think she's delusional, or she just in denial? I think she's really intelligent. <laughs> I think she knows exactly what she's doing, you know? And now it seems to me that she's kind of calmed down a bit. Do you think that Coates has been a calming influence on her? Who? Coates. Oh, Coates? Um, yeah, I mean, I think that she, I think love can really sort of tame the wildness of, of, of horses. But I think that she's, again, she's just sort of, um, I've never known if she's just really stupid and ignorant or if she's really smart. So I like I like straddling the line of that, you know, seeing if it's um if she's like in on her own kind of kind of behavior or if she's you know, she is she really that sweet? I think that that's sort of up in the air. Yeah. And with black hair, one of the things I noticed is it doesn't matter whether she's in the middle of a riot, whatever's going on, you know, she's still happy to doing makeup tutorials. Thinking about baby. That wasn't my favorite. <laughs> it wasn't my favorite. I really didn't want to wear that outfit. It was literally winter time, <laughs> and they had us, you know, you know, arrested outside, and we had to wear this little. It wasn't my choice. It was brutal. <laughs> it was brutal. But does anything face her? I mean, she just seems pretty calm and chill. No, oh, she's definitely. There's just a lot like that I want to know about her that. Hopefully this season, maybe we'll understand her a little more. I don't know. I, I know I did. And, and obviously we get to learn more about the characters through flashbacks. Is that something that's going to continue in season six? I have no idea. Flashbacks? Oh, and the seasons? Yeah, uh, we don't know anything. <laughs> and stop getting me in trouble. <laughs> don't ask me these questions. <laughs> They're watching us. Gonna get a shot. Okay, we'll stay away from that. We want you to smile around there. there. Um, so I'm sure you guys have questions. So if you want to line up, there are two mics. Spotlighting right now. Okay, but what a, before, before
before we get to that, there's something I want to ask. Because there's one episode that really sticks in my mind with the dirty panty business. Did you know that that was a real thing? Yeah. yeah. You heard about that, didn't you? I heard about that. Yeah, me too. Because there's so many sort of crazy, unusual things that the girls come about. Is there something particularly memorable from season five that shocked you at all? I mean, nothing shocks me anymore. I'm <laughs> just like, here we go. Um, I mean, everything shocks me. How we're treated, like, every, every season we learn something crazy. Like, this is still happening, like, all this madness and of course, the, I didn't know, you know, the panties, that, I, that, you know, that was my episode. So that was a little weird and crazy. Yeah. And funny story is that my family, they sew, like my aunt sews, like they made me dress it. So it was really also close to my, like, backstory and they had no idea about my life. Yeah. See, you really are. <laughs> yeah, no, so I'm not. Much. No, I'm not. I'm nice. <laughs> wow. Okay, and um, so if we start over here. Hi, what's your name? Hi, uh, I'm Eva, um, I'm here today to wear. So, uh, if you were in prison and you had school like right, what would you want to kind of cook you up in the kitchen to kind of make it a little bit better? I'm Spanish, so anything with beans, you know, like like beans, like I don't know. I'll take it fish and chips. <laughs> fish and chips. <laughs> <laughs> I like beans and rice. <laughs> I'm very simple. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, over here. Hi. Um, first of all, I'd like to say that such a nice to you because I want to give you a mic for a project on the show. Thank you. So I got two questions. The first one is what. Sorry about my English first of all. Um, do you think that this series has a really impact about feminists? Because it's the first time like we got that kind of show we got that reason right was more into violence and everything, but like we're into right is more into like explaining what's happening about women in prison in general. So what do you think about it? Do you think that feminists has a that this series has a real impact about feminism? So has it, has it impacted them? Yeah, of course. I mean, people are talking about it, you're asking me about it, right? So I definitely think we made an impact, and we definitely are pioneering, you know, women, I believe, to, to like the diversity that's on the show. There's no show like this. There's no, no show like this. That's why I think it's so popular, because finally people are seeing themselves on TV. Like, oh, that girl reminds me of my cousin. Oh, look, that's my tia. Or my mom is just like that. You know, we never really had that. I never grew up watching anyone that looked like me on TV either. So my little sister, who's 10 years old, can say, oh, my sister's there. Like, she feels represented. And I feel like we definitely need more of that. And yeah, hell yeah, it's a feminist show. I mean, again, pioneering. Jenji Cohen knows what's up. And everybody's trying to follow our lead. Thank you, Netflix. <laughs> they pay our bills. <laughs> and I got another question. Uh, so we see um, here, we see that um, you got like fun in jail, but did you also got people who like against what you're doing on the show? I feel like, um, did you say that we have fun in jail? And uh, yes, we have fun in jail. Yeah, I mean, I've always been concerned that our show might make jail look like fun, but there's nothing fun about jail, really. Um, I believe there are some people that are against that, what we're doing. Do you think so? Yeah, I mean, I just think that Genji writes like real life. Things happen yeah. that are funny in real life. Yeah, wherever you are. Life is ironic. Yeah, it's ironic. Like. Crazy shit happens no matter where. It could be in your mom's, in your abuela's kitchen, your grandma's kitchen. Things just happen. Even like through tragedy, like in funerals. I, I've laughed at a funeral. Of course, it's inappropriate. But something like my grandpa's teeth fell out. You know what I mean? Like something random is going to happen. And if, you know, I just, it's just real life. So yeah, of course, people are like, oh, they make prison look fun. But no, it's also evil because it's also a lot of shit happening in our show that makes you think and cry and laugh. So I just, it's a powerful uh, 
sure be part of. I mean, one of the interesting things about the show is, I mean, it's won so many awards and accolades, but um, in terms of Emmys, you want Emmys both for comedy and for drama, which I guess is a good dichotomy. Yeah, you, we, yeah, it's hard to put your finger on, like, if it's a comedy or a drama. It's hard to be, like, categorized, I think. I mean, everybody does their part. Like, I make you laugh mostly, you know? Um, so, every, you know, it's just an, an ensemble, and each of us has our own little part to make you feel certain things. Okay, over here, in the red. What's your favorite scene to shoot? Um, I personally enjoyed uh, playing like the villain, you know, when my character was mean. <laughs> um, I, I had a lot of fun with that, but I also enjoy, I like doing any type of like action, you running around or kicking or jumping. Just, yeah, it's just fun. I like that kind of stuff. You? Do you guys tend to do your own stunts then? Yeah. <laughs> I think my favorite, my favorite is fighting Tasty and uh, also Black Cindy <laughs> because I told her I was like, "Yo, go hard, okay?" Because during rehearsal she wasn't pushing me at all, you know. And then during the camera, I flew, right? And I was like, "Can it not be like so hard?" Oh, so you want me to fake it? And I was like, "A little bit." <laughs> yeah, but um, those were the fun parts when we get to like, you know not be ourselves, because I don't really get in fights. Okay, one time, but it was a tequila, it was not me. <laughs> That's great. Okay, next slide. Hi, um, I was just wondering, what it was like when you first started working on the show, trying to sort of like get into your characters, and, and what did you do to prepare? Um, <laughs> I definitely didn't make friends the first season, you know, calling out racial slurs and, and homophobic comments, which is the exact opposite of me. I'm not. It is. It is. It's She's true. so kind. That's why she's actually, actually pretty me. I'm actually pretty nice. Um, I'm a happy person, you know. Um, but my character is questionable. But yeah, it, it was tough for me to to yell out racial slurs and. Like I said, in homophobic comments. Um, so I remember that first season, I was very, I was ostracized. Um, I ostracized myself. I put myself in, in restriction. But I think the producer called my manager and said, um, does Terry get along with people? She doesn't seem to want to like, you know, make friends with everybody. And I'm like, well, my character doesn't like anybody. Why do I have to make friends with all the girls? Like. <laughs> I'm a method actor, so that was interesting, but it was hard to prepare. I watched a lot of Southern Baptist, um, you know, preachers and, and sermons and stuff so I could get my, my Bible verses on lock. You got it down. Woo! <laughs> She's amazing. Thank you. Um, I'm a big fan, and still am, of you, so I get to be her friend now, which is awesome. Uh, for me, I watched Scared Straight. <laughs> I don't know. I didn't really prepare too much because, uh, again, I had two lines and I didn't know what was happening with my character. So, uh, yeah, I just watched a lot of documentaries, talked to some cousins that were in there once. So, so how do I act? What do I do? It's pretty much what I did, really. Did you guys read the book? Because it's based on the book by Yeah, yeah. Okay, over here. I used to be able to answer this really well. I would say Taylor, you know, Piper, because um, I just felt like I want a bigger part. <laughs> I want the lead. <laughs> but, but now, but now I'm totally you honest. Play Taylor, I'll play Crazy Eyes. <laughs> <laughs> but now I'm so happy in my role. Like, I really couldn't see myself playing anybody else, but it's a good question. <laughs> Great answer. <laughs> oh, crazy eyes. <laughs> Just because she gets to do so she many. She wins all these damn awards. Yeah, because I want some, you know, awards. <laughs> I want to play that part. I want to win awards. I want an Emmy. <laughs> My paycheck to go woo, way up. My no. big house. New York. 
So <laughs> Jimmy Allen said, "Don't go crazy, eyes." I think. <laughs> but um, I I love Flaca. Okay, she's like changed my life. So I can't. I don't want to talk crap about her. I, I wouldn't want to be anything but Flaca. He's gonna be so mad at you. I know. Do you ever get on set like when you're filming and go, yeah, this this episode's gonna get an Emmy. This is really good. I mean, the finale of last season was so good. So, but we didn't get it. It's a good time. You know, every day to wake up and go to set, it's just good times. Best job I've ever had. It's, it's me too. I can't complain, really. Uh, Baskin Robbins. <laughs> okay, this one is what you do at Baskin Robbins. I was a shift leader. Oh, shit. 16. Boss. What do you think was the best moment during the acting of uh, the show, any real time this season? I don't think really like when. Uh, when when um, Kate Mulgrew looked in my eyes <laughs> and was like, just talked to Flacco really mean, um, and I had to talk right back at her. That was scary. <laughs> That was scary because in real life she's also intimidating. I don't know, but she really, she really is. Yeah. So it was funny. One day I came in. I used to waitress season one and two, and I came in wearing like my fishnet stockings, teary like makeup, and she's like, "6 a.m. What are you? Where did you come from?" I'm like, "The club. Like, I'm a waitress." <laughs> Harry, were, were you crying? <laughs> no. Just because. You know, sweating and tired, and I was working eight hours. She's like, "Oh, of course you do, honey." <laughs> yeah, red is red is is, yeah. is a. She was intense. She but, talks to you this close. You know, someone that's like when they talk, it's like, "How you doing, Taryn?" Actually, she's down here. I'm like, fine. <laughs> but but did, did like, she her approval was yeah. maybe years and years, but I got it, so I'm happy. Does she say an accent? Because obviously she doesn't really have a Russian accent. Yeah, yeah she does. Around me. That must make it more intimidating for me. <laughs> the one who doesn't stay in her accent is Lorna, because she's also German. Yeah. So during lunch, she has her accent. <laughs> and I try to imitate it, and she's like, <laughs> She hates me. <laughs> but she, I love her. <laughs> Uh, thank you. Okay, this side. Thank you. You both are like great actresses, and I want to know how much time and effort does it take to get where you are now? Thank you, by the way. Um, man, a long time. It's like, it's one of those things that kind of, it's highs and lows. You know, you have a really good year, good couple of years, and then you like, not good. So you have to really embrace, um, you know, the life of uncertainty. You have to accept that you've chosen a life that is really not stable, <laughs> never really going to be stable, um, and just be okay with that. And so it really takes the skin of a rhinoceros, as my grandma says. And I'm like, Grandma, does rhinoceros have tough skin? But apparently they do. And it, it takes really tough skin, you know, to, to continue forward in the business. But it's worth it. Have a dream or whatever you have. I don't know what it is that you want to do. Just continue to, you know, perfect it and work on it. And work on your craft. And it doesn't matter how long it takes. Trust me that that's what you're meant to do. I mean, I, I had this dream when I was seven years old in the Dominican Republic because that's where I was raised. And my mom moved me to California when I was 15, and I got my big break around 25. So honestly, it takes as long as it takes, but you just gotta continue to do it because you don't know when it's gonna happen for you. And all the crap that I went through in the past, I understand it now. And like she said, you know, actually I didn't, it's unstable, but if you really love what you do, it's so worth it. It's, you'll never have to like really work in your life. Yeah, you save your money. Well, yeah, save your money. How much are you making? Huh? You never have to work again? Well, I, my mom had... Oh, sorry. her agent. Well, my mom just saved my savings, so she, she's been really good. She's already, you know, uh, did some money in the stocks, so I've been doing well. Look at that. Save your money. <laughs>
Get it with mom until you're like 23 too. Yeah, right. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Okay, many lines over here. Hi, uh, my name is Jess, and I'm just wondering um, which um, actress or actor within Orange is the New Black um, has similar personality traits in real life, obviously taking away the bad stuff, but who is similar to the characters in the play? So who is most like their character? Z Maritza. I feel like there's a little piece of everybody in their character, you know, and I think that that's, whenever you watch a movie or TV, it's like, there's really a little slice of that person in there, you know, that's what makes it unique. I've always wanted to see like two people play the same character and see how different they play it, like for an experiment. <laughs> You guys do that like offset and you kind of pretend to be crazy eyes or something. I've tried. <laughs> yeah. She's really good. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Okay, over here. You two are like really good characters when you act because you get really into So um, I was just wondering, when you're offset, do you act exactly like your character without even realizing? Probably a little bit, me. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Um, like, I totally think they, they kind of like write what's going on or they yeah. see what's going on. And like, before Diane and I had the whole Florence thing, I used to always like pinch her butt, you know what I mean? Or like, you, you, you always want to make out. And she's like, no, I don't, Jack. And they would hear this, you know, I would just mess around with her. And they literally wrote that in there. So I do feel like Flaka has a lot of my personality. So yeah, I guess I'm, I'm definitely her on and off because I'm, I'm a little method as well. I think that's why they made my character more nice because yeah. I'm too nice. Like around set, I'm yeah, like crying all the time, sad. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're a, we're a little bit like our characters, portions of them. How, how easy is it to just cry on demand? How easy is it to cry on demand like that for you guys? It's hard. Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes when I'm in a good mood and I have to cry, it's tough. Yeah, you just gotta put yourself there. I don't know. It's technique, I mean, or whatever it is it takes you, you know, to get there, but it could be hard. And then to go home after, not to bring that home with you. Yeah. I just bring onions to set. <laughs> Start chopping them up right there, just look at my eyes and off we go. That works. Why not? <laughs> just kidding. Thank you. Okay, Thank you. Thank you. You're back. Hey. Um, yeah, so you both say that you work in the music industry. Um, can we expect like a duo of both of you? A duo? Yeah, I would love to have. I told her last night to come to the studio. Yeah, last night we each shared our song with one another and then we decided that we need to... Yeah, we need to do a song together. So thank, yes. you. thank you for that. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for reminding us. Yeah, she she's incredible and I'm supportive of her music. And I want you to like mix up my, my song. Mix it up. Yeah, DJ. She, she DJs. Too. <laughs> Because you said there's so many musical people on the show. Have you ever thought about doing like a little webisode or something? Musical style? I feel like in the future we'll have a musical. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Musical Orange is the New Black. When he sings on our show, mostly. Yeah. Yeah. Offset. Just around. Yeah, literally it's a choir offset. <laughs> some people get involved, some people don't, some people dance, but it's definitely true. Okay, over here. Good question. Mic's off. Um, well, I'm hot. Um, so, <laughs> uh, do it loud. <laughs> uh, I forgot. Oh, no. Um, firstly, it's an honor to talk to you. Um, you. And I recently got a drama scholarship, but I'm very scared of the way that people will perceive me and the way that they will look at me because. Um, in the past I've been bullied quite badly. Um, and my question for you is, are you ever scared on how people perceive you after the show? I don't, I don't feel scared. Um, I, I, that's not the, the emotion I feel. I feel concerned. At times I feel like, am I, am I gonna be more typecast than I already am? 
if that's what you mean. I'm so sorry that you've been bullied too, that sucks. I mean, it happens right up to me. <laughs> it doesn't well, have to happen. I've actually been in detention three times for beating up boys, so. All right, there we go. <laughs> I bet, girl. <laughs> Good for you. Yeah, all right. Um, yeah, so I don't feel, yeah, but I definitely get concerned that I'll be typecast. You know what that means, right? We just get stuck playing the same type of role. So that's probably it for me. About you? Yeah, I mean, literally, bullies are what got me here, really. <laughs> I love proving people wrong. Yeah, that's true. I love it. I freaking love it. So let that be your fire, you know? Yeah. You know what I mean? It sucks that people are like that, but honestly, um, you're always going to get that, no matter what, where you are in life. Like, people are always going to hate on you because they see something in you that they can't have, or God knows what it is, but that's their problem. Just don't even worry about that, honestly. For me, yeah, of course, being typecast, you know, that's why I try to create my own roles to get me out of that box that they only think I am, you know, um, including, like, my, my team as well. They started sending me out to other types of, you know, roles that are not exactly what black guy is, you know. So, it's, it's hard, it's hard. I have a, an, another question. It's, uh, has anybody, like, come up to you in the street and they, they actually don't know your name and they just refer to you as your character or people just only know you as your character? Yeah, yeah all the time. All the time. They never know my name. <laughs> That's why. And I usually get a big hug. Yeah. So it's nice. Or I get that girl, you're that girl. <laughs> that girl that goes like this. And I'm like, that's me. <laughs> like, you're that ugly one with the teeth. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so we have one question here and one question here. That'll be the last.